Hello folks, welcome along to the vlog and as promised today we're going to be putting together a vegan bean curry. It's going to be as close to the Indian restaurant style curries as we can get using authentic ingredients, none of your out of a tin stuff. A um, couple of people I have to kind of thank for getting me into this. Uh, one of them is Big Secure. He put a couple of curry videos out uh, earlier on in the year, springtime-ish. And I really caught the bug, unfortunately, so uh, I've been cooking curries ever since. And um, that's kind of what's led me to do this vegan curry, because uh, I'm eating far too much curry and beer. So uh, what we're going to do... Or should I say what we are doing at the moment is uh, we're doing a little bit of that meal prep thing that they do on the internet. I'm not going to go into it because it's all over the internet as it is. But today we're cooking up a big batch with over a kilogram of beans in there and we're going to freeze probably we'll get uh, 10 meals out of this. So that's the plan and uh, the other person who I'm going to shout out is Misty Ricardo. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, he makes all of his authentic British Indian restaurant curries on there and uh, you can follow along, cook along basically with all of his recipes and well, boy oh boy, I've never cooked a curry as good since I started watching his videos. So there we go. Right, so introductions aside. Bear with me, I'm suffering massively from hay fever here, which is why I'm not going to be on camera today. My face looks like a puffball. So first things first, let's get these pans warmed up. So the pan on the left is what I'm going to be using to cook the curry in, and the pan on the right, or at the bottom of your screen, is the one that we're going to be using to just toast some of the spices before we go ahead and start cooking. So let me just take you off the tripod and we'll go over uh, exactly what we've got and why we've got it. Right, I'm going to try and do this in one take because the hay fever's killing me. I know it's a digression but this is why I sound a little bit bunged up today. I'll try and do these ingredients in order of appearance in the recipe. So. This amount of ingredients will be sufficient for two portions of the curry so I'll run I've got more than that here because I'm doing obviously I'm batch cooking but uh, I'll give you the uh, amount needed for doing two portions of this particular curry so you're gonna start with three tablespoons of oil that's in here I know it says extra virgin it isn't it's rape oil rapeseed oil I'm just using recycling the bottle and then in this orange container we have uh, one Asian bay leaf, 10 centimeters of cassia bark, which is like cinnamon bark, and then also half a teaspoon of fennel seed, and one black cardamom pod, or the seeds from therein. And then across here we have half a teaspoon of coriander and half a teaspoon of cumin seed and what we're going to do is toast them over here shortly and then grind them in the pestle and mortar. Then we have chopped up uh, 75 grams of onion, 40 grams of pepper, red pepper ideally but whatever you've got in the kitchen is going to be fine. Then we have one and a half teaspoons of garlic and ginger paste. Really adds a depth of flavour that does. And then we have one and a half teaspoons of mixed powder I suggest you go to Misty Ricardo's channel if you don't know what mixed powder is. I'll tell you how to make it there. And then we have uh, two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of paprika and half a teaspoon of garam masala. Pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Um, in the microwave we have some base gravy. So here is the base gravy. We batch cooked this a few uh, weeks ago and it's in concentrated form so we'll be watering this back to use in during the cook but if you don't know what a base gravy is I suggest you go along to Mr. Ricardo's channel where he'll teach you uh, exactly how to make it okay so back to the spices so we've got uh, base gravy you're gonna need one portion of base gravy it's gonna work out about 500 mil or something like that um, We've also got one teaspoon of kasuri methi in there, 
and I'm going to use tin tomatoes but you can use uh, one and a half uh, tablespoons of tomato puree or four to five tablespoons of uh, peeled plumbed chopped tomatoes if you like if you so desire and then we've also got one and a half tablespoons of coriander stalks in there and then finally obviously the addition so this is to make a rogan josh curry by the way i did uh, probably neglect to say that and then obviously the main addition uh, could be lamb could be chicken whatever you like today we're doing a vegan one and it is beans and yes we've spared every expense on these beans so we've got supermarket own brand butter beans we've got uh, candelaly beans we've got uh, balotti beans and of course we've got red kidney beans you can use whatever bean you like apart from baked beans I think the tomato sauce would ruin the whole dish so I'm going to pop you back on the tripod and I'm going to go through the whole process and maybe do my best to talk you through it I might get distracted here and there but hey ho you're either along for the ride or you ain't and you can tune in tomorrow when I'm back in the brewery. Right, let's fire away. First thing I'm going to do is pop our oil into the big pan. A few tablespoons of oil in there. And in the small pan I'm going to up the heat and whack our cumin and coriander in there. We're going to get that toast in straight away. And then secondly, we're going to add the Asian bay leaf and the cassia bark to our hot oil. And we're going to give that 30 to 40 seconds to get going before we have the next ingredients and I can smell it already. It smells fantastic. I'm not going to put the extractor on today because I'm recording, but I'd advise you to do it any other time. So just to show you what's going on in there, there we have it, the cassia bark and the Asian bay leaf. So we've got our dry roasted uh, coriander and cumin seed here and we're just waiting until that aroma starts to come and maybe a little bit of smoke from the pan. So I'm happy now that these ingredients have had enough time so I'm going to bob in the seeds from a black cardamom pod and our fennel, fennel seed. So we're going to go along with that until we start to hear the seeds popping. Beautiful. And while that happens, I'm just going to go and reheat the base gravy. Right, there we go, that's on in the microwave. Get a saucepan out for the gravy as well. There we go, and we'll just sit that there. So I'm just going to up the heat a little bit on both pans. I'm just starting to see a little bit of smoke coming from these uh, these spices now. So what we're going to do is bring over our pestle and mortar. And we're just gonna block out the camera <laughs> while I slide them in there. There they are. Right, so you can hear me grounding those bad boys up. Oh, look at that. You can see they are now releasing a little bit of smoke. And uh, they smell, oh God, amazing. They smell amazing. Fantastic. Okay, we'll pop that there. So now we're starting to see a little bit of smoke in the cassia bark and whatnot. So in go the onions. And in go the peppers. And we're going to cook these for a couple of minutes on a relatively medium heat. We have the base gravy out the microwave, it's still frozen, but that's not going to be a problem. We'll just put some heat on underneath it, get a flame going. And then we need to add some water to that as well. Get 
get it diluted down there, 500 ml of water. Another 250, and we'll just start to bring that to the boil now. So we're just going to let this cook for a few minutes. We're wanting the peppers and the onions to soften, that's what we're trying to achieve here. So we'll give that a few minutes and then we'll come back. Lovely, right. We're getting there now with these onions and, chi and peppers, chilies. I don't know why I call it chilies. So what we're going to do is throw in our coriander and cumin mix. There we go. She's in. Give that a few minutes to cook through. Well, 30 40 seconds is really all it's going to take. So we've moved the base gravy onto the back pan. You can still you can see some of it is still a little bit frozen in there, but I'm bringing this to a boil as quick as possible. And we'll be adding this to uh, the curry anytime soon once we start to add the spices because the spices will dry the mix out, that's the problem. So now we're going to go in with our garlic and ginger paste and we're going to cook this until the sizzling subsides. You can hear that right. really change the smell now. Oh, let's get in there. Right, and then we're going to add our paprika, chili powder, uh, mixed powder and masala, salt and pepper. And then this will really dry, dry the mix up. You can probably see in there that all of a sudden it's gone almost like a paste. So we're just going to let that have a couple of seconds in that state, not too long because we don't want to burn the spices. And then we're just going to add a little bit of this mixed gravy, base gravy. I know it's not quite ready yet, but this will just start to loosen things up a little bit so we don't end up burning our spices. There we go. Now you can see, looks a lot more like a curry all of a sudden. Okay, the next ingredient is going to be our methi and uh, coriander stalks. I'm going to throw that in, and that's going to be followed by it could be your tomato puree, and there's nothing wrong with using the tomato puree at all. In fact, that's what I use mostly, but this time around, I'm going to pop in. Uh, some plumbed tomatoes. These aren't chopped, but I'll just chop them as we stir. Like that. Right, I'm just going to let this cook out for maybe three or four minutes now. And if it starts to look a little bit thick, I'll loosen it with a little bit of the base gravy. Uh, but we just want to make sure that all those spices are cooked before we move on to the gravy addition stage. Right, we're ready to move on to the next stage now where we're going to add the beans or meat or whatever you're doing. Obviously today in our case we're doing a vegan curry. I'm not a vegan by the way. But food is food my friend. It just so happens to be a vegan curry. If it tastes nice, then I'm eating it. Ain't that the truth? So, while we have those beans in there, what we're going to do is go through three stages of base gravy addition. And what this means ultimately, and what this means ultimately, is that we're going to get the curry on a high heat cooking and we're going to put in a couple of ladles of base gravy 
and we're going to leave it to reduce and resist the temptation to stir it because what we want it to do is stick to the bottom of the pan and caramelise, go through a mallard, mallard reaction or maillard reaction and that's where the taste in these curries comes from so there we go you can hear that already one two big groups of base gravy I sometimes get it mixed up and call it mixed gravy but mixed gravy base gravy it's the same thing it's a gravy that's pre-prepared for the cook so that's in and now I'm just going to leave that for about three to five minutes. I'm only going to start moving it around if I sense it's burning. If it ain't burning, it's just caramelising. That's good. Okay, it's had a few minutes, and in that time, our base gravy has almost come to a boil now, which is a good thing. So listen to the sound that this makes when I stir it from the bottom of the pan. That's because the bottom is all stuck and caramelised on in there. And it's looking pretty good. So we're going to go ahead now. Another couple of ladles. If you're doing a, a small batch, you'll only want one or a half of a ladle uh, of the base gravy because you won't have that much in your pan. You don't want it watery. Keep thinking the consistency needs to be like what you'd expect a curry to be like. Right, again, another three to five minutes of cooking. Right, we're ready for addition number three. You can see the whole dish has thickened up and it's starting now to uh, bubble like a cauldron. So there we go. Addition number three. I'm just going to rain the heat back a touch. I wouldn't normally, because I'm batch cooking, I'm concerned that we are going to burn, because I can't see the bottom of the pan now. Normally if you're doing a batch for two or three people, if you've got a big pan like this, you can still normally see the bottom of it. I can feel the bottom of it, and it doesn't feel burnt, but don't want to risk it. So we're going to leave that again for another three to five minutes, stirring occasionally when you sense it burning. Right, okay, so now we're getting close to the final addition. I'm not going to need any more of this base gravy, so that's going to go into the pan. I can now wash that pan. And then we're going to bring this down to the consistency where it's just a little bit thicker, just a little bit thicker than we'd have wanted because at the end we're going to add another tin of plumbed peeled tomatoes just so it's got that really tomato flavour that fresh tomato flavour uh, when, when we eat it not too cooked if you know where I'm coming from if you're not going to use these and you're going to use fresh chopped tomatoes then of course you won't want to reduce this quite as thickly Right, we are almost there, as uh, predicted by the amount of splatter on the uh, splashback on the tiles. So at this point, what I like to do, because I'm not a big fan of it, is uh, turn down the heat and get rid of the things like the cassia bark and the bay leaves, the Asian bay leaves, because, quite frankly, I don't like finding them in my meal so we're just going to go through and fish these bad boys out they should be big enough for you to find generally they are uh, sometimes I've had to use smaller pieces of cassia bark so kind of just takes your chance with those little nuggets of uh, nuggets of barky surprise but most of it you'll be able to fish out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this cool. I'm going to pop it into 
these meal prep containers that you've probably seen before. We do recycle them, by the way. They're not brand new. And uh, then when I eat this, uh, well, I'm going to freeze it all. And then when we eat it, I'll just re I'll cook some rice and pull one of these out of the freezer and nuke it in the micro. And we're good to go. But before we disappear, we will have a final shot for a thumbnail and maybe get uh, a little bit of a taste on camera so you guys know what I think. But I know it's good already because I've had a sneaky taste with a teaspoon. Right, I'm just going to reduce that a little bit more and uh, yeah, we'll come back in a minute. Well, I thought in for a penny, in for a pound, so I've got some uh, some basmati rice here. I thought I'd make a little bit of pilau, so I've added some turmeric, a splash of <clears throat> a splash of lemon juice, and a splash of oil. We're going to mix that in and bring that to the boil, and that should make us some nice pilau rice. I could even throw a few little bits of sliced carrot or a couple of peas in there if I wanted. I'm not doing a good job of getting this in shot am I? But I think by the time this is cooled I'm about to take it off the heat then this rice will be ready and we'll have a bit of a tasty Tesco. Well again I thought why not let's just add a little bit of diced carrot to that that peel of rice. I'll probably put a few peas in there as well and I knew I had to come back because I've not quite finished. We have to of course put this last tin of tomatoes in. Come on. Come on lid. There we go. So that, that last tin of tomatoes in there. And what we're gonna do is just stir that in. Let that break down. And uh, I'm going to turn the heat off right now so it's going to cook those tomatoes under its own residual heat. And here folks is the finished article. I managed to get three containers with 360 grams of bean curry in them each. We got the rice. I did a little bit of garlic and coriander naan bread. They're over here there. I basically portioned everything out and what was left is for Gemma and myself. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out though. It looks bloody delicious. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of a taste test. God forbid I look like the chap off the real ale guide. Jesus Christ help me if I do. But here we go. Bean curry baby. Yeah, would be better with a bit of lamb in it, I think. But I could survive on it. Mm. Very happy indeed. Cheers, we'll see you tomorrow.